What's going on? This is Tacker's Community Manager of Empires and Allies. Really excited to give you a quick little breakdown of the research abilities in the game today. Uh, what we're going to be doing is taking a look within the research base and seeing all the different powers and attacks that you're able to upgrade. So thanks for joining me. Let's go ahead and dive right into the game and take a look. So right now we're looking at my game. I have uh, a level 13 research agency. Let's go ahead and dive into it and see everything that's in here. There's a lot to go over, so I just want to make a, a video especially for this. Um, you definitely want to know your upgrades. This will help you plan your attack strategy and it will, in the end, kind of make you a better player to understand all the upgrades that are available. So we'll start with offense. Offense are, when you're attacking another base, these are your troops. So you're going to want to level these up per the, the style that you want to play. Um, first we're looking at rangers. I have my rangers leveled up to 7 currently. Uh, these are your ground troops. It says uh, rangers are all-purpose fighting force made up of riflemen, rockets, and medics. Weak versus enemy in infantry and strong versus the spider drones. Keep that in mind because later on we're going to be taking a look actually next here at the striker. The striker is a fast armored vehicle that gets in close to cover other units. It's weak versus tanks and spider drones, but it is strong versus enemy uh, infantry and aircraft. So that is something else to remind, remind ourselves. A lot of bases utilize spider drones and aircraft. You're going to want to have a healthy balance of ground troops and you know, vehicles that, have, that can take out either the, the spider drones or the, the you know, air attacks, rather. So let's uh, continue looking. I keep hitting volume. Sorry about that. Um, next up, we have the tank. The tank is heavily armored, hard-hitting combatant. Weak versus aircraft and spider drones, and strong versus enemy vehicles and defense structures. Next up, we have our attack drones. Attack drones are lightweight, are light, fast swarms that hunt and kill enemy defense structures. Weak versus anti-air defense and enemy infantry. Strong versus ground target. So this is something to remind ourselves. Enemy attack drones. They, in my in my gameplay, they kind of are the ones that go first. So I would definitely recommend you leveling these up as much as possible so you can get as much hit points as you can to make them last longer. I, I usually utilize my attack drones, I think, the wrong way. Next up, Tomahawk, level 7. I have uh, an unmanned ground vehicle, provides long-range area cleaning fire support. Clearing fire support. Weak versus aircraft and nearby enemies, strong and long-range. So these are a godsend. I usually end up winning my matches with the Tomahawk just because of the fact that it sits, back, sits in the back and just fires nothing but missiles down on uh, you know, the area that I'm looking for. So these are highly utilized in my attack strategy. Next up, we got the Stealth Tank. Stealth Tank is, is an invisible hunter firing an EMP burst. Remember, EMP is what's going to stun the enemy. So stealth tax can shut down enemy defenses. They are weak versus enemy infantry, strong versus enemy vehicles and defense structures. Stealth tanks, I don't utilize as much personally. However, I have been on many maps where they are the bane of my existence. So take a look into stealth, ta stealth tanks. They're a lot of fun. Up next, we got the helicopters, Apaches. Apaches provide overwhelming airborne firepower that can win any battle. Weak versus Patriots and domed aerial defenses, strong versus ground targets. So, helicopters, Apaches, you're gonna want to send them out, clear out the ground units, but watch out for any sort of air defense. They are very vulnerable. Next up is going to be the CNC vehicle. You can see I have not unlocked that yet. I need to, but the CNC vehicle is a force multiplier. So, it hacks enemy defenses and boosts nearby allied units. It's weak versus enemy vehicles and strong versus enemy defense structures. So this is goes in tandem with kind of your boost. Uh, this is this this vehicle while it's running with your troops, it's going to have an area of effect that is going to boost your enemy or I'm sorry, boost your allies, make them faster, stronger. So just imagine what this in conjunction with the boost that you can apply to your troops could do. After that, we got the medevac. Now, I have not unlocked this one yet either. The medevac provides battlefield repairs and healing. The others may live, is their motto. Weak versus enemy units and strong to support the allies. So this is exactly what it sounds like. It's your medic, it's your health. It's going to hang in there and heal you while you're sending your units into battle. So make sure and have a nice balance when you unlock these of both the CNC and the medic vehicle. Medevac 
is it's going to help you improve your gameplay. Next up, we have the LGL Troop. LGL Troops use laser guided lightning to quickly melt away enemies. They are weak versus aircraft, but very strong and versus enemy defense structures. These guys are who you are going to want to send in to destroy the buildings, to destroy those, uh, those air defense buildings that are taking out your helicopters. These are very strong. They use laser guided lightning. <laughs> And uh, definitely something you want to look toward, look forward to unlocking in the future. Finally, we have the Titan Tank. The Titan Tank are the kings of the battlefield. Twin cannons, rocket pods, and wall crushers. They are weak versus railguns and the domed thel, but they're strong versus everything else. So the Titan clearly it's the last thing you have to upgrade so it's going to be the strongest this is what you're chasing in regards of upgrades in unit uh, you know, unit upgrades so be on the lookout for how you can unlock the Titan tank with level 20 so you can see that's where I'm at right now uh, I need to level up my research agency to 14 to unlock my next CNC vehicle here but up next we're gonna look at our command powers command powers are the special attacks that you're using on the battlefield so when you are attacking another map, these are what, these are the these are the tools in your toolbox, right? These are the guns in your arsenal. So to speak. Uh, first, we're looking at the A10 strike. I have mine leveled up to seven. Uh, air support delivered by a flight of A10s. Air strikes are a fast, effective way of damage. <laughs> a fast, effective way to damage enemy structures and kill enemy defense units. Um, they are most effective against mass enemy ground forces. Definitely agree with that. What I love to do with these is target groups of ground troops. Uh, that is a warning to all of you who have your ground troops rotating and uh, you know, circling around your map. Uh, definitely I will be targeting them with a tens. Next up, we have a flare. Flares are deployed onto the battlefield, which designates a high priority target. All deployed units will immediately respond to the flare by attempting to maneuver to its position and engage any targets located there. Most effective for guiding units to priority targets on the battlefield. So this is a very helpful command power. It's going to just readjust all of your troops over to uh, whatever point you drop it on. Now, we'll go over this in a later episode, but you also want to keep in mind that you have the ability to unlock troops. And you are, uh, what are they called? Troops. I forgot, uh, I forgot the term. I'll remember in a moment. But anyway, there's another, uh, you can break your squads. There you go, thank you very much. Uh, you can break your team out in squads. Uh, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. Uh, sorry, it's a little late. I totally forgot the term. But, um... That, those work in conjunction with the flares, so keep that in mind while you're leveling flares up, is that you also have the ability to break your team out of the squads. Um, next we'll take a look at the Hellfire Missile. This one's a really fun one. The Hellfire Missile is delivered from a Predator drone. The Hellfire Missile is designed to destroy any single defense structure or unit the enemy has on the battlefield. The Hellfire can be fired directly onto a stationary target and steered in flight to switch targets or track moving units. So it's most effective against artillery and guard gear, guard towers. Keep that in mind when you're taking a look that, at a base that has a pretty, like a pretty strong defense all around. This is what you're going to use to break that hole in the defense. Maybe take out that guard tower, take out the artillery unit that is like destroying your your troops. You're going to want to send in a hellfire, one big blast of damage, and it usually helps. And next up, we're going to take a look at med pack. Med pack is pretty simple. When you drop a med pack on, uh, the med pack provides repairs and healing to uh, and healing to allied units on the battlefield. Any allied forces with the med pack's deployment radius will regain health. Most effective when applied to units concentrated in a small area. So pretty simple. When you drop a health pack down, there's going to be a radius of effect. Anything within that radius is going to get a health boost. Those are very helpful to you all. Alright, let's take a look at EMP. I have mine up to level 3 right now. The EMP delivers a short burst of electromagnetic energy over the target, causing all structures, drones, and vehicles within the area to temporarily shut down. Most effective when deployed on enemy defenses, just before the allied units come into fire. So, it's, this is your stun. When you drop down the EMP, whatever unit you drop it down on is going to freeze. Send your, unit, your troops in there, take out, the, take out that structure, you're going to be good to go. 
Next up, we got, this one's a fun one, the Orbital Strike. I have mine up to level 4 right now. The Orbital Strike is a high energy particle weapon fired from satellites in orbit over the battlefield. During firing, the commander can direct the beam's path, most effective at burning down a single critical enemy structure. This is a really good attack to use, very effective when you're there's something directly or maybe a line of items that you want to cause damage or take out. So what you'll do is you'll put down your finger, you can guide the laser around with your finger and really just kind of craft the, dis the destruction. <laughs> Next up, we're looking at combat stim. Now, the combat stims are dispersed over allied units in battle to provide a boost to their speed and damage. Most effective when deployed over close packed units engaging with enemy defenses. So, in short, this is your boost. You're going to want to throw this on a group of enemy or a group of your troops. It's going to make them faster, stronger, more effective. Finally, we have the fun one. The one that everybody's chasing is the tactical nuke. Once you uh, just the description is, the tactical nuclear missile is designed to deliver devastating destruction to a significant portion of an enemy's installation. The weapon also leaves a lingering area of radiation that degrades and kills any units, the structure, uh, <laughs> any units and structures that survive the initial blast. Most effective at softening a base prior to the full scale attack. So. I hope you all are reading along with me with these de with these details. There are some very good hints dropped within them. This tactical nuke is what you're going to use with your high level base. You want to just maybe weaken a certain part of it, carve that hole into the into their defense, and really make your attack there. So I have not yet unlocked the tactical nuke. Looking forward to it. Finally, we're going to go over the base defense upgrades. Uh, these are the <laughs> it's pretty simple. The things that guard your base. <laughs> These are the items and units and troops that are going to design, uh, defend your base while you're getting attacked from other players. Uh, so you definitely want to keep an eye on your upgrades here because this really counts towards your middle count, uh, which we're all playing for. So uh, first up, we have commandos. Uh, commandos, commando squads combine miniguns and javelin missiles to provide exceptional base defense. They're weak against the striker four or striker six <laughs> and strong against enemy infantry and aircraft so these are your troops i have mine leveled up they circle the base if you if you have if you have them uh you drop down a rally point you can have them either rotate from rally point to rally point or you can have them stationary maybe hidden kinds of trees so commandos are definitely want to have some down uh, next up are spider drones. Spider drones are autom autonomous patrol robots just designed to swarm and kill enemy vehicles, weak versus enemy infantry, and strong versus enemy vehicles. So spider drones are great. They are they're what you want to take out uh, your you know the other tanks with any any sort of uh, heavy machinery, heavy vehicles. These are going to take them out. They're not so great against uh, the enemy infantry, so you need to make sure and remember that uh, while laying them down. You can't have only spider drones guarding your base. Any sort of heavy, or I'm sorry, any sort of troops are going to take them out immediately. So you want to have a healthy balance between spider drones and commandos. Um, up next is tank. The tank is a heavily armored, hard hitting combatant. Weak versus enemy aircraft, or I'm sorry, weak versus aircraft and spider drones, but strong versus enemy vehicles and defense structures. So a tank, pretty, pretty standard when it comes to a military game. Uh, this is going to be kind of your mid-range attack item. You're going to send this in. It's great against enemy vehicles and defense structures, but watch out for the spider drones; they will take them out. Um, up next, we got the, I'm sorry, the stealth tank. Um, this is actually something that I could upgrade now. I don't have enough uh, fuel, so I gotta go back and mine some more. But uh, the stealth tank, let's see. Oops. Click upgrade, sorry about that. There we go, sorry about the delay there. Invisible hunters firing EMP burst, stealth tanks can shut down enemy defenses. So these are very similar to what we have in the attack side of things, but these are going to guard your base. So keep in mind, if you need, uh, if you're starting to notice that maybe uh, like bigger units are coming in and taking out your like artillery or maybe your, your guard towers or something, you're going to want to drop a stealth tank down because, or I'm sorry, not drop, they're already on your base, but you're going to want to have a healthy amount of stealth tanks. Stealth tanks. So you can uh, stun those those things coming in. 
those heavy units, a stealth tank is going to kind of stun them and allow your other defense structures and units to work on taking them out. So recommend stealth tanks. Up next, we got the Apache. Very similar to the attack uh, side of things. These are going to be your air, your air defense in this case. Uh, so they're going to be strong against ground targets and uh, you know, weak against Patriot missiles and domed area defenses. Next up, we got the MLRS. MLRS is a long range, heavy hitting rocket launcher, weak versus nearby enemies, but strong at long range. So these are close to the missile launchers. Uh, I would say these are pretty similar. I have not unlocked mine yet. Look forward to it. Next up is landmine. Landmine's pretty simple concept. You put them down, if people walk by, they can cause damage to them. So proximity fuse landmine is a cheap effective counter to light enemy units. They damage any enemy nearby. Something to keep in mind is that enemies or other players are going to see your landmines. So don't try and get too sneaky with them. They can be seen unless they're kind of hidden by view like a tree or something like that. So that's a you know a good tip to, to remember. Landmines can be seen when you're putting them down. Up next is the shock mine. Very close to the landmine, but the shock mine deals limited damage, but has an EMP blast that immobilizes any units or any vehicles close to the proximity. It won't take out ground troops. Ground troops are not made of machine that can be shocked and stunned. So clearly this is only targeted for tanks, vehicles, things like that. So those are your upgrades in Empire Snail. As you can see here that I still have a little ways to go. And of course you also want to upgrade the research, uh, <laughs> the research building itself that will help you unlock the higher upgrades and, and I believe faster actually. Um, so that's it for enemy upgrades uh, or for your upgrades here in Empire's Analysis. Uh, that is a little special on the research building. Thank you for watching. This is Tackers and I'll see you in another video. Thanks a lot.